Of all of them. I do. Because you're I don't, obviously... I don't support any, though. Because you're a commentator, so we have to unbiasedly support everyone. Yeah, exactly. I use my I use my standard icon every time. It hasn't changed since I started playing. I've got my Season 2 icon on. But nobody really cares about what icon we use. We want to know what the picks and bans are. <laughs> Malphite and Aatrox actually being banned away from Wicked. Sorry, Wicked, not going to play your favorite champion. Fiddlesticks removed from Mithy and Zed from New Duck. Okay, so... The Fiddlesticks ban, I mean, you heard Trevor talk about it earlier on with the with the Twitter responses that he wasn't that impressed with Mithy's Fiddlesticks. I mean, I don't think mm. really anyone has been, or even Fiddlesticks in general over this entire weekend. So that ban, I'm not sure if it was needed, but it's definitely EG, or something EG wanted to take away. But the Malphite and Aatrox, they don't want Wicked playing anything comfortable, but they still left Zack open for him. Well, Cassidy didn't mean taken away from Frog, and that does mean Twisted Fate's available. Nuke Luke has played that a number of times, so we'll see whether they go for that as their first choice. It does also mean that, like, so like you say, Zack, Shen's still open in there, Thresh is still out there, so there's a lot of champions that many would consider the first pick. Yeah, and there's Kennen still available for Zoro Zero, who's now 6-9 and nine with that champion. I also have Mithy, who... Loves Thresh. He always asks, come on, give me Thresh, give me Thresh. He proved it yesterday that he can play a phenomenal Thresh, Boom. and it looks like that will be the first pick. Yeah, Thresh first pick. No surprise there. We'll see what Evil Geniuses go with. Do they consider themselves getting some overpowered picks? Snoopy actually used Zack in the jungle the other day, if you recall. But could that be wicked? With that Aatrox ban, he may actually revert back to Zack. I'm trying to think what would he play if it wasn't Zack with these bans coming mm. out right now. I mean, Rumble is there, Brayley is there, Renekton's there, but... He played it against Gambit this morning, did he not? He was Bricket. Mm. He definitely was Bricket back in the spring split. That actually could potentially always be a jungle Shen. So, um, yeah, he did play Shen earlier on today as well. Yeah, it didn't work out so well there. That was, yeah. Oh, laugh. No, it's not going to be enough laugh because Vlad has been locked in. This is a champion it that's actually strange to me because Korea have been playing Vlad quite a lot lately, as of China. Yet, Europe has barely touched it apart from Lemon <sighs> Dogs. I was sorry. I, I really wanted to see that Olaf. It's not gonna happen. I mean, Nintendo Dex is the only one that ever plays or, or plays him back in North America, but he will have a lease. And we've seen how strong he's been on lease. He's undefeated on her so far. But yeah, the Vladimir Newt Duck's pretty much been the only one. I'm trying to think if there's been anyone else yet. He's two for two on him so far. Mm -hmm. And I really want to know what kind of summoners he's gonna take because we saw that Flash Ghost earlier on. And I believe that was actually by Zora Zero. Yeah, it was by Zora Zero. But is he going to go with the same thing? We'll see. Of course, Elise also being locked in. That's going to be Dexter. And if you think your mind back to how Dexter just destroyed Gambit with Elise before, it could be a scary, scary prospect for them. He did manage to land all those cocoon shots he was throwing out. But it's evil geniuses that are making their choices. What is Pete going to play? Will it be the rat? Will it be Vayne? He's pulled out a lot of good AD carries so far this weekend. Frogging in discussions with him right now. Of course, the support hasn't been chosen. It looks like it will be Twitch and Sona alongside him. So this is a combo that worked for them on day one of Super Week. One thing, though, I will say about their combo that they have right off the bat, not a lot of damage in their team. They mm -hmm. have percent damage off of, of Zach, obviously, but they have pretty much a tank top laner. They have a jungle Zach, most likely, and then they're pretty much dependent on that Twitch. So Frog it has to play some high damage champion. We're going to see AP as real middle. We saw that actually last night in North America, I believe. Which means Zora Zero is top with Vayne. So we're no, talking about no, 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 not no. a lot of damage. Zora Zero is top with Vladimir. But with Vlad, that's yeah. what I meant. Sorry, yeah, with Vlad. Did I say Vayne? Yeah, he said Vayne. Going wrong with my brain. They're, they're both Vs. So I, knew what, I knew what I meant in my head. Nobody else at home would have. But of course, we just talked about EG not having a lot of damage. That's a hell of a lot of damage for Lemon Dogs. Yes, it is. I mean, if they catch anyone with a cocoon, they're probably going to die because they have the hook right behind that. And that's not going to be, when you say APS, it's not going to be APS. It's going to be Blue S. I hope it's APS. We actually saw earlier on today in the OGN, actually, Ezreal in the mid. In fact, it was Ezreal Vayne. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the one downside, though, if he does go AD, luckily for him, though, because it would be Blue Ezreal build, is that mm -hmm. you feed a lot of your uh, CS into the AD carry later on in the game. And when you have two of them, you kind of split that down the line. We've seen it happen um, earlier on this week, and it didn't work out for them. So... I, I'm still hoping it's AP. Actually, I'm going to check his runes because I really want it to be. No, I'm pretty sure he's going to go blue as like Dade did this morning. We'll see whether he does or not. That is going to be Ari locked in for Froggen. <laughs> you can tell by that. that you Checking know the is. runes. Damn it. <laughs> not going to happen. So, we've talked about this before. Double AD comp. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to win out early on. Okay, sorry. I was like, are they going to swap? Because they were taking a long time. But yeah, you kind of need to win early on. And with their combo, they can force fights a lot earlier than EG can. Where EG, looking more towards that late game with their whole Shen, Zack, some split pushing happening in there. But Lemon Dogs, they just want to fight you. Mm. And the thing is, Lemon Dogs have been controlling EG in every game they played so far with Dragons. They're currently up. Uh, in the first game, they had five Dragons to one for EG. In the second game they played, it was two to one. 
And with this team, they can easily contest and easily hold on to that dragon yet again. And I keep saying it, I'm sorry to keep repeating it, but dragon's been so impactful so far in this Super League. <laughs> well, the Lemon Dogs looking confident, smiles on their faces. And why not? Because they are the number one team in the summer LCS. Fnatic took it in the spring, but it's the Lemon Dogs, one of the new boys, the new upstarts that came through, said they were going to take first and took first. Can they do in the playoffs? That's the question. That's when it counts. Will they make that World Finals? They're already into Season 4, I should point out, once the first and second team will get through to Season 4 automatically. And of course, it's looking like Gambit may be that second team. Evil Genius is right now. They're trying to get out of that horrible tied situation that they are stuck in. They are all tied for third place right now. Multiple, multiple teams all stuck in that one spot. It's a four-way tie right now. And if Evil Genius is win this, they will be on their own in third place. And that would be amazing for them. I mean, obviously, Lemon Dogs, they don't care. I mean, they should care if they lose this game because it's all based about that momentum going to the playoffs. But, oh, there's the Anivia plushie that we, that we were all hearing about. It actually looks pretty good. So kudos to the person that made that one. But, EG, this would be a major win for them if they could pull this off. And hopefully, they brushed off that game earlier versus Gambit. Well, Evil Genius is in the form of CLG EU broke my voice before, and it seems that it may well happen again because it's definitely sliding out somewhere. Going out the door, not too sure where it's going, but Lemon Dogs are going to be the blue team. Evil Genius is on your screen there. Are the red team, and we'll see how this one works out. They've got no Anivia this time, so we're not going to get that hour-long game. Will we see Miffy, though, going straight in? Surely will. Shadow Dash comes out. He's going to get locked up. Miffy goes down. First blood for Froggen. And that is why you don't face check anything. He did get a word down, but now they're going to lose control of their jungle. And Wicked, force level at taunt level one. Luckily, it worked out for him, though, so it's not going to hurt him too much. And EG, are they going to stay here in red, or are they just going to ward it up and leave it behind? Well, I was just wondering with Dexter there. He's being brave against Wicked. Shadow Dash would have been available in a couple of seconds. So he's stuck around, but backed off eventually. Ward control going out there from Evil Geniuses. Lemon Dogs haven't actually got themselves any wards in the jungle of Evil Geniuses so far, because that's what Mithy was doing. And it's... Usually it's Wicked, the one that was face-checking. I know there's only... There's one in Spring Split that I can remember where he face-checked and they end up losing that game. But right now, I mean... It's, yeah, it's bad to lose that. I mean, look what Froggen's coming to lane with. Double Doran's ring and the health pot. So it's going to be hard for Nuke Duck to go up against this. But he has Ezreal, so he should, shouldn't be hurting too much in the end from this. And Mithy, he didn't blow Flash, so he didn't waste any summers in the end. Actually, no one really did. Except no, he, Wicked's Ignite. I think he just accepted his fate and was like, whoops. Sorry, guys. Kind of screwed up there. But more importantly is the fact that Froggen did get first blood. He did go back, and he got that second Doran's ring. So often we see these first buds come in and they don't actually make use of them. We're also seeing an invade here, but Lemon Dog's actually in the bush, ready and waiting for this one. They're going to see EG coming. They might be able to get a revenge kill. Nuke Dog's going to come in. Crepo's the one that's taking low. Flashes away. Oh, double flash comes out. Lemon Dog's... Oh, Crepo goes down. Can they get another, though? They've used the exhaust, but Yellow Pete, he's going to get taken low. Mithy's going to come around here. Has he got death sentence? No, he hasn't. And the Tabs is not going to be able to get himself another kill. And he actually leveled up his Lantern first. I believe that was because of level one action. He kind of panicked, picked it up. But right now, look what actually happened. And Zugus could take a little bit of damage, but it forced Yellow Pete to back on the top turret. So he's going to be delayed bottom, actually back to top lane now. And Snoopy's going to be delayed in the jungle here as it, his red's being stolen away right uh, from under him. So despite the first blood going to Evil Genius, this is Lemon Dogs that really strike first. That is, like you say, the red buff going down. Dexter doesn't want to stick around too much longer because Snoopy's going to launch himself in there. Got himself five gold after that <laughs> last extinct shot. Not really what he was after, though, because it was all about that blue invade that's backfired on them horribly. Zoro Zero being bullied a little bit by Wicked here in the early levels down the bottom. Yeah, Wicked was able to get that level two right before him. He's able to pressure him quite well, but Zoro should be able to farm very well against him later on. And we saw him earlier on with his with his uh, Vladimir in their game uh, yesterday. He just straight pushed that top lane, wasn't touched at all. And Lemon Dogs on the invade once again. This time Dexter. He's already taken the red buff. He wants the blue buff, completely countering out Snoopy. Snoopy's going to come in. He's only level one right now. Dexter is tanking up the blue buff, though, so he is going to be forced to back off. Wicked coming around, so I'll try and help out. Shadow Dash across, forces the flash from Dexter. And good job. I get that out of him. Obviously, he can't go for that flash cocoon that he's been able to do previously. And Wicked wasn't really forced to do anything himself. I mean, he's just going to miss a little bit of CS in lane, but not going to hurt too much in the end. And Dexter, he was thwarted away from that blue buff, which is a huge win for EG. Nuke Dog doing a great job at dueling against Froggen. And considering Froggen went and got that double Doran's ring, Snoopy's so, so low by the blue buff here. We'll have to use that smite to get it away. But nevertheless, the buff will be picked up. That takes him to level two. Yeah, I mean, Ezra, he's so hard to deal with in that lane. With that arcane shift, he can get out of ganks very easily. He has a lot of poke, a lot of damage with his uh, mystic shot. 
And Froggen, I mean, it's, it's always hard as an AP Miller to go up against an AD carry like this, but it's all about if they can hold on, if they can just last long enough to where Lemon Dogs kind of don't get the early advantage and they don't power up with their double AD carries, and they should be fine. Not to mention, Lemon Dogs are very squishy and each have a tanky lineup. A lot of pressure or game being applied in this top lane. A good play onto Yellow P, actually taking low. The Condemn forces him, bounces him back, and Yellow P drops a lot of hit points in that exchange. And honestly, you would expect Tabs and Mithy to be strong in this opening fight and the fact that they did get that kill onto Crepo it's only helped out Tabs even more. Hasn't gone back to buy though. He's gonna be sitting on a decent amount of gold. So when he does go back he's gonna have an advantage over Pete. And the thing is that EG's forced to play so passive because they don't have an exhaust anymore. Crepo it is currently down for him. He doesn't have flash to escape. You know, Pete obviously does have both his summers available but if he gets caught, if he gets condemned then into a hook like he could drop very quickly and so far Tabs is building a nice CS lead over him. Well that CS lead in the bottom lane is not really developing. And like you say, that 2AD carries, that's really the only opening setup here right now. We should talk about Dexter, of course, because he has both red buffs and the blue. So we'll see whether he goes for this gank in this mid lane. He's just hanging around, seeing if Froggen's going to go aggressive. They are about to hit level six in this mid lane, which is why they're waiting. He's probably expecting Froggen to suddenly go aggressive the moment he gets that spirit rush. And I was just thinking back to that Twitter response about Nuketuck being like the most approved player as you do see Dexter go in, but Dexter's actually glances his cocoon! The cocoon lands, the Q comes in from Dexter, tries to sink the fangs in, didn't really have the damage. Nuketuck will have level 6 in a moment, so he will maybe go for that true shot barrage, see if he can land it in Froggen, but as it is, they back away. And I was trying to think about that Twitter response where people were saying, Nuketuck, most improved player in European LCS, but he also gets camped quite a bit by Dexter just to make sure he can be solid throughout the game. And with this Ezreal, I'm not sure it'll be as impactful in terms of roaming around and ganking as other champions would be for him. Well, we talked about the gold that Tabs has. They are going to go back. We'll see what they pick up. He's got 1,400 gold right now, so it's going to be quite an item. It will be straight to build toward a Cutlass. And that almost makes it so he can actually duel Yellow Pete. If he finishes that Blade of the Rune King before Yellow Pete, he should be able to just pressure him very hard in lane. It's going to be very tough for Yellow Pete to get a lot of farm, but he's able to catch up and Right now, Nuketuck just ulting that wave, so he wants to just kind of get the turret, or get straight to the turret. He also wants to back away too, right after this wave. Yeah, he's going to clear it out. So we we'll use that true shot barrage. Which wants to get quick farm. Actually, miss one CS. Disgusting, Nuketuck. Honestly, these pro play levels. <laughs> you see them miss this gold. Zora Zero, though, he's doing a great job in this bottom lane. He's starting to apply the pressure on towards Wicked. Yeah, I mean, when he hits that level nine mark, that everyone always talks about with Vladimir with his max rank Q, he can harass so much that. Wink is going to have to invest into that Spectral's Cal Road to early on. Probably go for an early Spirit Visage, but he actually goes for a Giant's Belt instead. But now we do have that lane swap coming in because of that. And you'll be going to be sneaking in against Zoro. And that's actually going to be tricky for Wicked because, obviously, the advantage that Tams did have. Vayne's going to be now on his own, effectively farming without pressure on him because it's just not worked out so well for Preet and Crepo. And they realize that, you know, Zoro in their game yesterday versus NIP, he just shut them down with that constant pressure. They're actually going for very early dragon. Remember what I said earlier, when Lemon Dogs beats them, they always control that dragon. And right now, EG, a first step in the right direction. Yeah, and actually, I think Zoro Zero realized that. He was backing off. He said that he's going to clear the wave. The rest of the team are going to come in there. Nuke Nook, of course. True Shot Barrage back available. See if he can get in and get the steal. They're going to get the vision. Zoro Zero comes in. True Shot Barrage doesn't land. Crepo tanking up, though. He's going to go down. The Dragon did go across the Snoop. He's done. United's coming in. We're going to see Wicked joining in there. It's not going to be in the right time, though. Zoro Zero might get caught out. Wicked's trying to get on towards him. Yes, he will pick up the kill. And that's going to be a one for one trade. Dragon, more importantly, though, went to EG. Oh, great job by EG right there. That could have gone so much more worse, but Wicked is able to come in, able to pretty much keep them off of that as Tabs and they even rotated down towards this middle lane. EG, great pickup. Lost one, picked up Dragon, worth it any day. Yeah, they are um, maybe going to put pressure on towards the mid lane too. We didn't quite catch on that. The actual changes that they had there, we do now see Tabs and Mithy. They are on the mid turret. Tabs actually catching some damage out from Froggen. Not really going to do a great job at clearing this wave out. Wicked, though, he's back in his bottom lane. Not really where he wanted to be, I don't think, because they did the change around earlier on. And we see Pete and Crepo heading back down there. It's like, I feel like I was just here and just left this place. And he's going to do that right now, head it back towards that top side. But will Tabs and Mithy stay middle? Will they go bottom to kind of counter this? And only time's going to tell here. And it looks like, honestly, they could just go bottom because they realize how scared Ichi is of this combo. I think instead they're going to say, let's get ourselves that pink ward gold that we can see just around the side here. Will they go for it? They're going to go for the thing? No! Could be a base check in the dry bush. Nope. Pink ward goes down. The pink ward is really on here between these guys. Crepo 
He's actually a long way out of it. And look at Dexter. Dexter sends him blood here. He's actually into the tri bush already. Thinking about going for it. Hoping that he's going to come back around towards that ping ward. See if he can ward bait him in. But no, nope, he's going to step away. Stoopy's going to be here giving that blue buff over to Froggen. He might miss it that bottom lane. Actually getting very low. He might be able to steal away the red buff. But nope. Froggen gets it. And he's going to head down bottom now. Or just go back to jungling. Till, wait till that level <laughs> 6 point. So we'll have that to gank. Just going to keep us on our toes instead. 63 CS for Zora Zero. He did try and interrupt on that Dragon but didn't quite work out, but he's doing a good job against Wicked so far. Starting to edge ahead in that CS. You can see the new icons on all of the items. He's been back to buy it. It's the Vampiric Scepter, I believe, and Zoro Zero. Like I say, we don't see a great deal of lands in the European LCS right now. But he's making it work. I mean, he's, I guess, ahead of the curve. You saw him playing Kennen, so much to split going 6 and 9. His Vladimir, I believe, is 1 and 1 now. The thing is, he's pressuring Wicked so well, and he's at that point where he can become unstoppable. He has Flash, he has Ghost, he has those really utility summoner spells to really push, to really go for some kills, even to back away if he needs to. So he's going to be very, you know, hard to be ganked by Snoopy here, especially since they have a low damage with Wicked. One thing Ophelia should be mentioning is the fact that Nuke Duke is falling behind on CS to Frog, and it's nearly a 20 CS gap right now. Frog doing a great job at starting to wipe out that ward. You can say, uh, Wave, sorry, he's just gone back and got himself a needlessly large rod. So it actually may be trouble for Nuke Duke now. Yeah, and we talked about AD, or double AD comps, and he's going to have to make sure to keep farming away, but if Zora Zero keeps at this, if he doesn't get punished, then it won't really matter too much, because his ultimate amplification damage from that is going to make it so his ulti, or New Tech's ulti across that, is going to hurt very bad, and Zoro, he's just going to keep pushing. With that revolver, he's just non-stop pushing, non-stop spell vamping, and you can see EG responds by sending their AD carry support back up against him. Yeah, sending him back to the top. You can see already that Tabs and Myth he had gone to the bottom, which means Wicked is going to be in that 2v1 situation. He absolutely loves so, so much. Yellow Pete, though, is maybe going to find himself a spider. The rat and the spider, it's it's a usual uh, sewers combo that they do find each other in. <laughs> no explosive cast thrown on his head. That was just... That was random. Yeah. And it actually made Dexter uh, like, come out like, it, like there was a word in that bush. But, you know, we had Kripa talking to us uh, yesterday, or talking to Joe and I um, during a game, and he was saying that when you're forced to lane swap like this, if you don't get the ideal lane in the beginning, and then you have to swap later on, you fall so far behind. And right now, we do see gank bottom by Snoopy. Well, it's Tabs is going to get caught. Let's bounce on a lot of tower hits came in on in there, which is why they got that kill in so, so easy. Good shadow dash from Wicked to get him caught out on that turret. I was about to praise him for a great CS advantage, but it's now Froggen. The Repel comes out. He's not going to go diving for that one. <laughs> Dex was not suicidal. But there is a 20 CS advantage between Pete and Tabs right now. Tabs had that advantage. But that death's not going to help. Yeah, it's not, but he's close to that Blade of the Rune King right now, and the thing is, that's what's so deadly about a Shem. If you're trying to push that tower and you're a Vayne, you get taunted under it, you're going to take a couple of hits, you'll be forced to flash away, and when the jungler comes in for that next one, you're dead. That's exactly just what happened. Well, Zoro Zero now got the pressure of that double combo of Pete and Grepo, as we sit, talks about going up there, and they are definitely keeping him back. Froggen forced to back away from this one, Nuke Nuke comes back to lane. He's got himself that Tear of the Goddess early on. He wants to get that uh, frozen, uh, fr frozen, the Iceborne Gaul. It's technically it's frozen. frozen. It kind of does what it does what it says in the tin. But that's the bottom turret going down. So that's the first one of the game right now. They have invested a lot to get that one. And it has successfully gone. That's actually going to free up Mithy and Tabs. Let's see where they head off. Looks like Tabs is roaming towards the top lane. So it's going to be the back in towards the top, back into a 2v2 lane. Yeah, they definitely want to send Zoro off by himself. Just let him keep pushing, let him keep being a nuisance because, you know, when you have a Shen, you expect him to split push later on in the game. You expect him to be that nuisance that the other team has to deal with. But when you have a Vladimir, you have that same opportunity, but you have someone that does a lot of damage. So even if they send one person at you, or potentially two, when you have these utility summoner spells, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. My voice may do, though. We'll see if whether... You've it... gone out of Barry White to something else now. It's, it's, it's definitely getting deeper as I go on for somehow. I'm not sure how this is even working right now. Maybe we need a bit of a helium to just get it back up there. But it is 3-2 in kills. Evil Geniuses, they have a 700 gold lead. Despite getting that very early first blood on Mithy within the first 30 seconds of the game, it's kind of going the way of Lemon Dogs right now. And if you think your mind back, cash oh, your mind back. Oh, they're going to see. They're going to try and go get the crescendo on it. Actually, he's midly. They're going to dive in towards the big Crepo. Take him very low here. The exhaust should be enough to save him. And Tab's backing away from this one. They thought about tanking it. They're going to tank it. Snoopy launches himself in. It's a double kill in the top 3G. Wow, fantastic job of them to pick up those two kills. And they kill Tabs again, most importantly, who had that CS lead over Yellow P. He's not going to have it anymore. EG's going to get a turret. But in the meantime, Zoro's like, all right, 
I'll push the bottom lane. I'll get a lot of free farm here, and I'll get some damage onto the inner turret, but Nuke Duck low. Well, and Nuke Duck dead. dead. <laughs> That's for sure. Froggen just went on, and I talked about this. Once he got that death via grasp, he just turns the aggression on. And Nuke Duck, despite having that double dodge blade, will not have too many hit points to be able to deal with the combo. If he gets caught with one of them charms from Froggen, he is going to die. Yeah, that's why Blue Ezreal need, kind of needs a lot of farm to kind of get the items you need. The Iceborne Gauntlet's so key to be able to kite people really well, but Dragon has respawned. Ichi says, all right, we'll give that one up. We'll go for a push on this inner turret, but Lemnogs are up and able to respawn in time. So a good amount of kills being picked up by Evil Geniuses, and look at this, Crepo and Pete, they are back down here. Dexter's heads off to the side. Ping Ward goes down. Are oh, they going to grow aggressive? Dexter might have to back away from this while the rest of Evil Genius is collapsing in around him, and he skitters away. So EG's getting the ganks, they're getting the kills, and they're getting the dragons. This is exactly what they need to do to pick up this win. They're already 2-1 and one in the Super Week. They need this victory to kind of keep their, their playoff hopes or the 4-5 way tie alive. Right now, they're on the road to do it. They're doing a phenomenal job. That gold swing went very quick. Trisha Barrage way behind. It's not even going to trim out the bottom wave either because Dragon had gone well before that. So they're going to have a rough timer of it because they saw the Trisha Barrage go across and not find its target. But gold-wise, it's a 3k advantage for EG. And Froggen picks himself up the blue buff once again to put more pressure back on Nuke Duck. Yeah, poor Nuke Duck. I would not want to beat him right now because Froggen is ultimately going to be up now. And <laughs> with the DMG up as well, he should be able to apply a lot of pressure and potentially kill him again. It's all about that one charm. If he can land that, he's actually going to go back and buy right now. Zora Zero taken low there by Yellow Pete. Spray and Prey wasn't even available. He will be now. It's going to be just about respawn, and he's going to have to shortly back away from this turn. He's going to have the pull to try and troll his way around there along with that ghost, like you said earlier on. But Crescendo almost up. Expect Crepo to pop that Crescendo and go for a kill here. The tower is about to drop. Will they turn aggressive? No, they will not. But the top tower goes down in response. So 2-2 two, two in terms of turrets. Both top and bottom going down. It's all about the mid lane now. And it looks like Tabs will finally have that Blade of the Rune King done when he does go back. That's like the core item you need on a vein. Follow that up with a Phantom Dancer. You have a lot of damage behind yourself. And when you're against these very tanky targets like a Shen, like a Zac, who's going to be in your face, you kind of need that item. But then again, Yellow Peep, even though he was behind in CS, with those two dragons, with that one kill and those three assists, he completes his at the exact same time and is actually one longsword ahead of Taps. See how much that damage transfers as the fights begin, because right now, Lemon Dogs, they were looking to try and keep the lane farming going, but EG have actually pushed the pace. And this is something we talked about earlier on in the day and yesterday, the fact that they have been more aggressive. You know, at the 16 and a half minute mark, EG are looking to be aggressive. This is something we never used to see from the old EG. Yeah, and it looks like, I mean, having and rated on the team to uh, analyze everything, show where their weaknesses are, having Shaka to give it some insight as well. It's really helped them out. I mean, do you see Froggen going in? Goes aggressive, gets the DFG down on towards Nuke Dog. Look at that, half the hit points quickly burned down there. And that was while two of the members were around him. That's going to be scary for him. Throws out the charm, catches on towards me. The Ignite goes down. The rest of his team can't quite, quite, quite get close enough, and I can't even speak. It was a good attempt, though. <laughs> it was a good try. But yeah, they were able to kill him either way. He's able to escape. Both flashes blown right there. Zoro Zero is forced to come up here in that middle lane to just defend it. And EG, I mean, I talked about Lemon Dogs. If they can get that early advantage with their team comp, with the amount of damage they have behind themselves, then EG is going to be in for hurting. But they've been able to get around that, that initial part of the game, that early, fa uh, early laning phase, and actually come out ahead from that. So as long as they keep at this pace, they are going to be really hard to deal with. However, right, Zoro Zoro is still farming very well. He's going to be going for Azonius here. And he even got those uh, Ionian boots, so he has an extra cooldown reduction. And we can't even talk about the fact that Lemon Dogs have that hyper carry. They have Vayne in there because Twitch is there as well, which effectively counters him pretty nicely. We're seeing Zoro Zero, though. He might get focused on here. Spray and Prey going to come down. No, not going to waste it. He's going to hang on. Now he uses it. Gets less bounce on towards Snoopy. Snoopy tanking out the turret. Zoro Zero is going to get caught out. He gets taken down. It's Pete that picks up the kill. Nuke Nuke coming in, though. Last extreme shot comes out from Snoopy. The Ignite is not going to be enough to kill him. The heal will come out from Crepo just at the right time. We were both like, is it? Yes, it is. Come out. Yeah. I'm confident about saying that now. <laughs> we do have another new Sarge picked up for Frog, but that was a good job by Yellow Pete to use the Twitch to his advantage. We do see him go Frog and going in yet again on the Mithy here, and almost took, we're talking about half health with just a little bit of a combo. And you're definitely right about that whole Twitch versus Vayne thing, where Twitch can sit back, spray and pray through the entire team, and be fine. He doesn't have an escape mechanism, mechanism obviously, but Tabs, he's... He's stuck at that single target DPS. And he doesn't really need an escape mechanism because he's got effectively a protect team around him. 
Shen's going to cover his ass. Snoopy's going to come bouncing in on him. And then, of course, Crepo will crescendo anyone that gets close to him. So the rat is well protected, well covered. Wicked's got himself that Sunfire Cape and Spectral Cowl. He's happy to now split push farm. Throggen is doing a fantastic job of farming. Lemon Dogs, they're under pressure again here. They were under the exact same pressure against Alternate, though. They turned it around that time. They're going to have to do it again. Yeah, they did. And, and New Tuck, I mean, what's made Lemon Dogs so good is his ability to pick up the kills to roam around, interact with other lanes, and he's been shut down from that. He hasn't really done that with Ezra, which you, you kind of really can't do too well. I mean, it's not an assassin kind of champion that he uh, he likes to play, and EG, they've been able to take advantage of that right now, and the real question is, where's the next move? And I think it might be at that dragon yet again, hoping for a team fight to break out there. Ooh. Zoro Zero continues to farm. He has actually kept ahead of Wicked in terms of CS, which is not too surprising, I guess, for a Vlad versus a Shen, but Pete, look at this. He wants to be the assassin again. He's looking for the kills, waiting in the bushes. And Zoro Zero is the man that's returning to lane. Was taken down by the combo of Pete and Snoopy earlier on. There is actually a two-level advantage, and here comes the Stand United. He won't see it coming because he's going to be invisible. He uses that pull, and the Shadow Dash didn't come out. Now it's available. There it is. Locks him down. It's another kill. This time, Wicked takes it. They are using that Shen Twitch combo so perfectly and so well throughout this game. That is the second time they've been able to uh, kill someone on the enemy team in this game from that whole strategy. And EG, they're picking up kills left to right, extending the lead 8-2. to two. And Just over 4,000 gold lead right now, and it looks like EG are looking to do a little bit of split pushing here. Flash Crescendo comes out, doesn't really catch. Yes, he did. Nuke Nook was the one that caught. The Arcane shifted, but he still got locked up by that Crescendo. And now down the bottom, Tabs goes aggressive on towards Pete, uses that barrier. Is it going to be enough to turn it around? No. Tabs gets himself the kill, but turns it straight around. Wicked gets his own. Yeah, Wicked, fortunately, Wicked missed that taunt onto him. Actually, really miss it. That was actually Tabs pretty much dodging that with that tumble, so it was a good job by him to do that. But in the end, EG, they pick up two kills. Most importantly, though, they haven't taken objectives necessarily off it. They just took red. Dragon is available right now, but if you're going to go for kills like that, you need to have something to come off the back of it, and it looks like Dragon will be that answer. Dragon's not a bad objective to take. They've got a 5,000 gold deficit or advantage over Le Lemon Dogs. Lemon Dogs trying to put pressure on towards the middle turret, but Froggen is always there, and he's always clearing out that wave. He likes to farm quite a bit, and with his team not needing him for these dragons, it makes it easier for him to continue to do that. With that Zonius, with that DFG in hand, he has two of the Nisu large items. Wouldn't be surprised to see that Death Cup coming out next. And EG, three dragons in, up 10 to 3 in kills. And look at the kill spread they have. Quite well across the board. I mean, Wicked having four kills. We talked about being Brickit back in the day um, over in the spring split. He's doing that yet again. You have two kills on Snoopy, you have two kills on Froggen, and even two kills on Yellow Pete. And for once, Krepo doesn't have any kills. No, for once he doesn't. <laughs> he's not being the scumbag that we used to. <laughs> Pete, though, he's continuing to be off on the side, split push farming. He's feeling really very safe when he does it. Well, of course, with that stealth mechanism, like you say, and the fact that Wicked's coming in on top of him will actually cause people to question whether they should go up against him. And the big thing is, look what boots Wicked invested in. Dionian boots of Lucidity yet again, or not yet again, again or for the first time, I guess we've seen uh, throughout the LCS. He has so much cooldown reduction right now that he can afford to do this yellow submarine tactic over and over, sitting at 35%, his ultimate almost up yet again. It seemed like it just happened, only at 117 second cooldown. So every two minutes, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. We should talk about the fact that when Wicked does come in, the kills are happening. He's 4 0 3 right now. He is. He's so hard to deal with. I mean, even with a vein, even with these four DPS champions that you have on Lemon Dogs, he's still hard to shut down. I mean, you have percent damage out of Tabs, you have percent damage out of Dexter, you have amplification out of Zora Zero, but I'm not sure if that would be enough because if you do focus him down like that, what about Froggen? What about Yellow Pete? What about Snoopy just jumping on top of you? How confident is Tabs feeling right now? He's going up against Yellow Pete. Stand United is back available. He's waiting in the bush. Meanwhile, though, at the side here, so Crepo getting caught out with the cocoon. Tabs is going to back away. Yes, it looks like he's not going to go for Pete. He's going to step away from this one. They don't have vision of uh, Wicked. He's up in the top lane, continuing to split push on his own. So he didn't fancy taking it, realized he would have been in 2v1. And the thing is, with all of the ults he's been using, with or combined with uh, Yellow Pete, he hasn't fallen that far behind in CS. Zoro Zero hasn't been able to take advantage of that by just clearing waves left and right and really stretching that lead. So Wicked's been doing a fantastic job this time. And I, I feel bad for what I said in Champion Select when you take away you know, those two champions from him. 
What is he going to play next? And his Shen has been doing very well. His Shen has been doing very well. You should not discount Brickin. It looks like the mid turret may go down. No, the hook actually on Wicked, not really the target they wanted. They've got a good cocoon on him, though, and a lot of tower hits coming in this time. EG will have to back away from this one. The question is, will Lemon Dogs pursue? It'll be foolish to, because there is a rat heading up the river with Spray and Prey ready to go. And not to mention Frogin with that DFG. His finger getting really itched to hit that button. And here comes Yellow Peter. Oh, we can see a crescendo come out of uh, Krepo again. Well, Noob Duck is in there. Remember, he's not got a lot of hit points, so he could get locked down and do a lot of damage. EG have not given up on this, while the less the many Lemon Dogs have backed away, and that's actually going to give him the turret. Froggen goes in. Standing 90 was used. He tries to go towards Noob Duck. That's a lot of damage coming out there. He <laughs> tries to get him. He got him, like, all out right there, taking him down to about 25% without an ult charge. And we see the Crescendo. The Crescendo catches on there. Shadow Dash comes in, and Froggen picks up the kill. Now they're going towards Dexter. Dexter has to repel away. And EG picked themselves up another kill on Nuke Duck. That crescendo, that was that was the epitome of like a perfect crescendo landing on the very edge of it. Was able to catch Nuke Duck, able to lock that down. And we talked about EG taking objectives after kills. Looks like they might be able to get this turret very low, but Zorazer, he has something to say about it. He's coming around the side. Yellow Peak may get caught out here. Second very low. Wicked once again getting hooked in there. Not the target they want, but that's a great play coming straight down. There's going to be time turning around. Let's bounce from Snoopy. Will it pop? Will it prop? No, it's not going to do enough damage. And Zoro Zero, he's going to try and chase this one. Has got Flash and Ghost, but doesn't feel confident enough he'd get a kill. Yeah, he won't have the team behind him, and all it takes is one charm for him to die. We saw Froggen with that zone. His ultimate actually is about to be up. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him actually go for a kill here. So Ezreal, is he going to come in? Going to stop the back. Snoopy getting very low. And that's actually going to be a free turret for Lemon Dogs. Had a passive available, though. Froggen's not giving up yet. He was just off the side. He's hoping that he'd step a little closer on those raids. He's still sticking around, and Lemon Dogs wisely stepping away from this one. So it was simply a middle turret, a piece traded after all. And it's 3-3. Mithy, though, is going to get chased on. Froggen not going fully aggressive with the Spirit Rush. That was... That was too close. That was very too close for Mithy. Great job of him to escape. He's eaten two charms. He's actually fought against uh, Froggen three times now. Escaped them all. So good job by him to not die after that first uh, initial face check that happened. But right now, I mean, because of the play that just happened, EG has ways pushed up against them. So they're like, all right, we'll get the kill. Get some damage onto your turret. We'll go back. We'll get a lot of free farm. And then we'll just do the same thing over again to you. So let's take stock of the situation. 4-0-4 for Wicked. Built himself pretty damn tanky right now. The Warden's Mail in there, Spirit Visage, and the Sunfire Cape, along with those Boots of Ionian Boots to get the cooldown on that Stand United. He's been coming in every time on top of Yellow Pete's head, which has been keeping him safe. And you can see Tabs once again lingering off there inside ward coverage. Pete not worried about this, and this is actually buying him so much free time because Tabs is like, I want to duel him, but I can't, yeah. because Wicked's going to come in every time. I think it's Wicked's ultimate was used in that last fight. We saw middle, it's now up again. Because of all this cooldown reduction he's been using, I mean, you're exactly right. Tabs can't free farm because of that global presence of Shen, because of that stealth of Yellow Pete. And the only real thing to do to kind of counter that is maybe rush a Baron. Like, or rush top lane, like a four or five minute push top lane will force him to back away. I mean, we finally do have Nuke Duck getting a little bit of a power amplification. Yeah, he's got the Man Mude completed. We'll see whether he makes use of it, because as it is, still with that lack of hit points, he keeps getting caught out. Frog and jumps on him, and he just gets destroyed. Does get himself the blue buff, though. We'll see. He's getting good farm going. He's keeping up, but look at Frog, and he's a monster right now. 27 minutes in, getting close to 300 CS. I will say this, though. If we see Lemon Dogs land a hook onto any one of EG, they can do a huge amount of damage. Zora Zero, that's not good. No, he was caught out. He does use the pull crescendo at the Perfect time there. So, so well executed by Krepo. He's going to be happy with that. Oh, yeah. Very happy. And they actually might be a Baron from that, too, because they have a lot of, they have a lot of damage because of Yellow Peep. He's been able to get very strong in this game, not to mention Froggen. I try to say, though, Lemonox, if they get a hook on anyone, they potentially have the damage to burst someone down. Dexter is just off at the side here, so let's not discount Lemon Dogs here. We've seen Baron still turn games around before. Now this time they're going to go aggressive. He actually tries to go in towards Krepo. He's just going to drop back down, went in towards Snoopy, but that was a good condemn onto Frog, but he uses the Zoni Zargas the moment he comes out of it. Now this time, Mithy does not escape the claws of Frog, and let's bounce on towards Dexter. Catches on towards Tabs as well. Yellow Pete putting the damage down, not enough to slow him down. Stan United was used, but Wicked will successfully get away from that one. The poison will not be enough to take down Dexter. It was a one for zero fight after Ooh. all of that. And it's evil geniuses that come out on top again. And it looks like they might be able to go for a dragon here. Yellow Pete with the damage he has, with having 
with Snoopy there. Yep, easy to take that dragon away, and that will be, I believe, their fourth of the game. And the gold they just picked up from Pure Objectives is just getting ridiculous. It's really getting out of hand, and it's really reflected in all the items they've been able to build. And that's what's actually building in towards the fights, but we did just see there. The fights are still close, even if they don't go perfectly. Lemon Dogs have yet to actually have a full-on five-man engage, and they could put a lot of damage down because we talked about the fact EG were tanky, but that's kind of been mitigated now because Wicked's got himself tanky and now starting to get the damage. Yeah, and it's just because Nuke Duck's finally been able to get that rampant power. Tabs is damage, has a lot of damage, but Zoro Zoro frogging, actually. I don't know why he used that ultimate. He was trying to catch him there, but Tabs is even waiting by the side. So he would have been able to turn that one around, but just slow knows they've been able to accrue the items they needed to handle the tankiness. So if one person does get singled out, and all four or five of them are hitting you, that person is going to die no matter who you are. Well, Krepo's trying to sneak around with that Oracle and get the wards down, but Mithy is in there as well. <laughs> Frogging wasn't in the bush. He's still not backing off. Hasn't got Spirit Rush this time around, though, so could, nope, not going to land it. Threw it out the opposite direction, Krepo, though. Being covered off. Look at Dexter coming around the side. Cocoon throw now. Krepo's in trouble here. He's going to get caught out. There's not a great deal. The charm didn't land. Hemo play comes down. Crescendo was used, but that is a very dead support player. And that actually might have been what Lemon Dogs needed. I mean, they can push top right now. They could potentially go for Baron. They have Froggen close to being forced to back right now. He does have his zone is available, but all it takes is one cocoon and Wicked. He's going to be pushing this bomb and he has his ultimate available. Snoopy getting caught. They're diving on towards him. The last bounce was used, but simply defensively, they're going to try and protect out this inner turret, but the rest of Lemon Dogs are moving as one right now. Five members of them trying to put the pressure down. The medium wave will come in, but Wicked is still off down the bottom. He has Stand United available if it's required, but he's going to try and put pressure on the bottom inner turret of his own. And Froggen's finally here, so their wave clear is here, but he's actually not there. He's looking for a kill here, gonna be trying to come in from the side. He has his ultimate available, but he's just gonna be able to push middle. Where's he going? He's just like, nope, not worried about that one. Just gonna go off to middle. We've already lost that turret, guys. Don't worry, I'll just clear out this wave. And Wicked looks like he's gonna get that bottom turret too, so one for one trade in the end. Mm. But how are them going to react to it? Are they going to go try to save the Turk? Are they going to oh, go bottom? They're going to lock out. They're going to catch Dexter here. The charm gets thrown out. It's not going to catch him in the right place, but Dexter doesn't matter. He's going to get mowed down, tries to repel across the Baron. The orbs come across. Not going to get a catch him. Elastic Sting shot from Snoopy, but he finds himself head to head with Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck then gets dived on. Spirit Rush comes out from Froggen. One more hit. There's the Ignite. Takes him down. Now Dexter's trying to get away. Snoopy, he's going to Elastic Sting shot back on again. It's Pete, though, that's going to find oh! Tabs. Tabs is going to get on towards Nuke Duck. Is it going to be a turnaround? Stand United comes back out, Krepo comes in, it's a massacre in the top lane. That is so unfortunate for Taz because he ulted in right as Yellow Pete stealth up and they had no vision detection. You saw Wicked come in with that huge shield on top of him and EG getting three kills right there from losing one turn. Are you able to get Baron off of this? And Lemon Dogs, we might have finally met their match. Well, they took the bottom turret as well, so they had traded turret for turret, and then just the simple, what we'd call it in a normal FPS, it would be exit frags, and the EG just cleaned house. 16 foreign kills right now, they've got a 10,000 gold lead, and the Baron on top. And they have a Frog who's 5-0-2, they have a Wicked who's 4 0 and 6 They are just so tanky, they have so much damage. I mean, you saw Yellow Pete hitting tabs there, just shredded him very quickly. You even see Taz building up a Negatron cloak because he realizes Froggen's a very real threat. You actually see three Negatron uh, cloaks coming in with Dexter and Nuke Duck. And with this Baron, EG, what are they going to do to punish Lemon Dogs? I mean, they still have two outer turrets to take if they want to. And then they, all they have is those inhibitors. And it's interesting, this is the second time we've seen the double AD comp coming out this weekend. We saw Fnatic using it in day one, Lemon Dogs this time around. Is this simply a case of teams feel it can work? They've been successful in in uh, scrims and such, but just can't seem to make it execute because even when the picks and bounds, when we looked at it, we're like, well, EG are actually really low on damage, but it's worked so well. Yeah, it's just, you're kind of confident in your early game, which Lemon Dogs aren't surprisingly strong at. Like, they're not a team that's strong in that early game. They're strong in that mid game when they start to roam around. And I mean, it can work, but the thing is, if you fall behind, you really stay behind. I mean, because it's a blue build Ezreal. If you fall behind on him, period, you stay behind. But then to have all your, uh, CS funneled into both of your AD carries, it kind of limits where it can be. And you look right now, Yellow Pete has 250 CS, Froggen has 247. They're leaps and bounds beyond Lemon Dogs. At the moment, they are moving back in. Stan United back up available again, of course. Wicked pushing down that bottom lane again. The orbs coming flying through. Zoro Zero even taking a lot of damage from this one. Despite the fact he's got that Spectral Cowl on him, 
Froggen is a damaging machine right now. Tabs, he's going down the bottom. He's going to try and deal with Wicked. He will be able to clear it out. Wicked actually doesn't want to go up against him. Interesting to see how that one's going to work out because he's got a four-level advantage. I'm not so sure why Wicked would step away from that fight. Because he won't be able to kill a Vayne. Just, just fight out. He will not be able to kill him, period. And just him being there, his threat, like, there's no point engaging on Taz when he could die. With him being down there, is threat enough to uh, Lemonize to look, pretty much let these turrets go. Well, he has backed away, and actually, despite the fact is, he pulled an AD carry, the main AD carry, away from the mid lane, which bought them time on the inner turret, which is all he really wanted in the first place. It's going to be the top inner turret. It's going to be the next focus of target for Evil Genius. Is there 5-4 up right now in turrets? It's the first turret advantage they've had in a while. And it doesn't look like it's going to be much Lemon Dogs can do to stop it. And look at Froggen. He's not he spotted. He's not spotted and he wants to go aggressive. He's ready and waiting to Spirit Rush across. The moment the minions come in, but Wicked, he's not going to be able to stand United. Yes, he is. Condem was already used. He's going to go to Pete. And Froggen going to be coming from the back here. Oh, Spirit Rush is away. Dexter's got to be careful. Oh, he catches him in a cocoon. Really? Are you going to go 1v1 with him? What are you thinking, Dexter? You're not going to work out for you. It's another inner turret. That's all of the inner turrets now down. And Evil Genius is, where are they going to go next? I would imagine they'd probably go to Dragon now. <laughs> I mean, why not? It's, it's up right now. You can pick it up. There's no point in pushing on any inner turrets at this point. And Froggen, it's on 2,500 gold. You have uh, Wicket sitting on 1,100 gold. And the thing is, are they going to be able to crack the shell of Lemon Dogs? Are they going to be able to take that inhibitor turret down? Because once you get that, once you get one inhibitor, it opens up the game wide for you. And he's usually going to pick up that Dragon now. Are they going to take away that perfect score they could have had in Super Week, more importantly? They can't take away any position from Lemon Dogs, but a victory here would be a huge confidence boost for Evil Genius as he would take them to 3-1 and one in Super Week. And they would just need one more win to secure. Well, they'd secure their place in playoffs, I believe, if they can pick this one up. A look across there. No, not yet. It's <laughs> still very tight. Yeah, because actually EG has one more game to play tomorrow, and I believe SK has two to play tomorrow. No, one to play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see how that goes, obviously. It's just it, the stands are so close. I mean, EG has to pick up this win. Lemon Dogs, they don't necessarily have to to stay in playoffs. They, but they could all first. be on 14 and 14 tomorrow. Don't worry. It's still oh, watch. It's gonna happen. It's still possible. We'll be casting till Tuesday, non-stop <laughs> marathon casting. Non-stop. Actually, it won't be till Tuesday because technically it'd be through to Sunday because <laughs> we go straight into Gamescom. True. Straight in there. Teams won't really need to practice because they've played all full matches. Nevertheless, though, it is Lemon Dogs. They are up against it. This is the first time they've really been tested. Alternate really put them against the wall earlier on, but today it seems that Evil Geniuses are in full aggressive stance. Gambit, they destroyed Evil Geniuses earlier on, but EG have reacted well in kind. And right now, EG, the only real initiate they have is Snoopy. Unless you want to go for a flash or send out of Krepo. And Krepo actually picked up a Mikhail's Crucible because it's like the perfect support item for Sona. It gives you that mana regen, gives you that ability to free up someone that gets caught with any CC, and plus you're in the back anyway, so you won't really be focused down. And that means if Frog and Peak get caught with Cocoon, get caught with a Condemn or a Hook, bam, they're out of it right away, and you completely turn around that fight. And without that Snoopy split push, there's no way you're going to push through the Lemon Dog's wave clear because with the double ADs, they're just going to mow them down. Yeah, and that's that's the really tough point. Maybe you have to decide, like, do we want to flash your shadow? Do we want to go for this fight on the turret? And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Ichi wait for the next Baron because of how much this game means. And the GA on Froggen is going to be a serious issue and that's going to probably make him just a little bit more confident because he wasn't confident enough already to <laughs> dive in. <laughs> He's definitely going to be a problem. Nuke Duck, though, with that blue buff, is trying his best. He's trying to keep away, trying to keep up. And EG, they're keeping hammering away at this one. Look at where Wicked is going. He's heading down towards that bottom wave. So it looks like they're going to do the top-bottom split and try and cause a problem. The middle wave has also been cleared in there. The hook actually on Crepo. A lot of damage getting burst down there. Froggen quickly puts an explosive cast down, just as I mentioned. Wicked go, Froggen going in there. That's going to be the Shad Stand United. Shadow Dash will come across. He's going to catch three members of Lemon Dogs there. Mindy's going to get caught down. Dexter's in trouble. Tabs does get a kill on Yellow Pete. This is turning around nicely for Lemon Dogs. Froggen's in trouble now, but he gets the kill instead. Sonia's Hourglass used at the last second. Nuke Dog desperately trying to hammer away at him. It was a two for two exchange after all that. But we talked about EG going aggressive. They went in. And now they're not going to be able to take any turrets off that, though. They do get two kills. So in the end, it was a two for two trade, which Lemon Dogs, I think they'll take that one definitely. And EG, they kind of got shut down there. They they did very well. I mean, Froggen was able to preserve his GA, which is, is kind of a key point when we come into this next Baron fight in about 30 seconds. And with the death timers, I'm not sure either team can really rush it down just yet. 
Well, Zoro Zero's. Oh, no, it's GA did get popped, sorry. It did get popped, yeah. He, uh, and actually, that could be a problem. I mean, the Baron will be up in 17 seconds. It's a 12,000 gold lead, but as you just saw, despite the fact it was diving on a turret, this is far from over in terms of team fights. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with this right now. And Lemonogs, they're showing that, yeah, they're behind quite a bit, but they know how to do these team fights against probably one of the strongest team fighting teams here in Europe right now. And EG, we're going to see a dance. We're going to see that Baron dance. Of course we are. <laughs> what else would Do you we... remember what dance Baron does, Demon? He twerks. Yes, he does. He does. He's, he's twerking it underneath that water, ladies and gentlemen. That's what he's doing. If you don't know what that is, then... You're you know... good. <laughs> if you don't know what that is. Then good. He's going to twerk himself down the river. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dragon's going to join in. <laughs> and it's going to go down mid lane to your base. So what happens if a Dragon and a Baron twerk together? I don't know. The world explodes. The world explodes. <laughs> they win the game. Well, but nevertheless, the world may explode because it's Lemon Dog starting off the Baron here. They've noticed the Frog and is nowhere near. They may get this one. Snoopy's coming in. He's going to oh! have it. Oh, what a hook there. What a hook from Miffy. Interrupt Snoopy. And that's a Baron for Lemon Dogs. I can hear it right now in Lemon Dogs' voice communication. Miffy said, guys. That's why you give me Thresh. I got this. Yeah, that's why you give me him. Because I can make plays like that happen. And they stop Snoopy from going in for a potential steal. And Lemon Dogs, they were down 12,000 gold. Baron pretty much gives you about 8,000 gold in terms of stats. They're actually going to be aggressive here. They're going to be the ones pushing an EG. And Wicked, he committed his ultimate to that fight. Wow, well, let's see. Fight, if you want to look at it that way. <laughs> the non-committal fight, as I guess it was technically. He was actually building up towards a Trinity Force as well, because he's built up that tank. He needs a bit of damage, feeling confident. But suddenly, suddenly, the roles may have changed. And you've just seen Crapo in the bottom corner of the screen swiping the hair to the side. The pressure is very much back on EG. Yeah, exactly. I mean, good thing, the thing is, if they lose this game, they go even with SK at the bottom of the table for 6th and 7th place. So that means they're out of playoff contention then. They're back where they were at the beginning yeah, of the week. Exactly. So they need this victory. They obviously have one more game tomorrow, but they want every win they could possibly get. And they had the breakfast. We talked about him eating pancakes and it kind of gave him those wins. They had their breakfast, but they got to make the win happen. Yeah, they got to make that happen at the moment, though. Nuke Dog, we said, you know, when the blue airs falls behind, it becomes a problem. But actually, as the game progresses, it doesn't matter how far he's behind because he's going to complete that build and he can kite so well. So if him and Taz actually work together pretty well, no one can really catch either of them. It just kind of comes up to if Froggen's going to commit his flash and all his uh, ultimate charges to get back there. And with that Banshee's Veil and Tabs, not really going to be able to do that. Trish <laughs> Wicked tonic to dodge it. Snoopy turns himself into a big balloon. He just bounces around there. Well, that's what you get for not getting your last extinction shot down. No wonder they call him Mithy there, because he's such a big blob. No problem. Oh, I mean, he, he's even said he hasn't been working out. It's been like a month. Hasn't gone to the gym. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, right. Calling Snoopy an actual big blob. That's, that's, <laughs> that's brave right there. But it is evil geniuses that are on the attack. They were sat waiting around, expecting, expecting Lemon Dogs with the Baron buff to be being the aggressor. But instead, EG are like, well, they're not really coming at us. So maybe we should just keep the lanes pushing. Maybe we should try and set up for some form of gank. Wow, and they have three oracles if, if one wasn't enough, because they want to set up a gank here. Blue buff shouldn't be spawning time soon because I believe Nuke Dog got it a while ago, but they're going to try to catch someone on Dogs off guard. And if they do this, they're going to have at least an inhibitor off of it. Potentially game because we're so late in. Let's see if anyone passes by. They're hoping that a, maybe a Mithy or a Dexter comes roaming in there. But look at Lemon Dogs. They're set up waiting for a gank on that top lane. <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. Everybody waiting for a gank. Nobody really shooting. The Arcane, Arcane Barrage goes across. True Shot Barrage, rather. Arcane Barrage, bit of a mix. That would be a so scary thing, wouldn't it? Arcane Shift with a Barrage. <laughs> I feel that Zoro Zero is going to step out and go for these minions, which may be the time. But look at Lemon Dogs, they're all sat waiting. EG actually losing their patience here, may start moving out. This is this is a tactical game the of chess. They've been seen, they've just spotted all the Lemon Dogs at the side. They're going to rush for the middle in him. They should be able to pick this one up pretty easy too, because they can afford to tank. It's already low at this point, and Lemon Dogs, with that Baron move available, are they going to fight for this inhibitor? They're going to hit the tower, and they are going to run, and wisely so, because Lemon Dogs still with that Baron buff. They're not the fight they're really looking for, and they're happy to take away their success. Actual laughter coming out. I believe that was Crepo. No, it wasn't Crepo. Which one would have been laughing? Which one does the laugh? Uh, it's like, not Crepo, because well, he just does a call. Yeah, because Sona doesn't make sound. No. Just, he's mute. It might have been Froggen, maybe. Who knows? But nevertheless, the Dragon's going to go towards EG. That's going to keep the goal in a 10,000-plus buffer for them. And that will be the bottom wave zone out. So, despite Lemon Dogs getting in, getting that Baron, 
taken it away. They've done nothing with it. They've not got aggressive. So that means they're not really that confident still. Yeah, and the thing is, we're 43 minutes in. There's a lot of gold accrued across both teams. We're basically at full item builds for, for most people, or at least at their max amount of core items that they need. And yet, fights aren't breaking out. We see Frog and pick up a Void Staff, has his GA up again, which I don't believe he had when Lemondogs got Baron. So yep. Lemondogs could have pushed right there knowing that wasn't uh, available. And right now, it just comes down to who has a better team fight, who gets that better engage. And with that inhibitor turret being down, EG has the positional advantage because they have that crescendo, because they have that Zack jump. Well, the Black Cleaver has been picked up by Noob Nook, so he's going to be doing yet more damage. We saw Ravenel's Death Gap being picked up by Zara Zero. He's going to be doing yet more damage. So, Lemon Dogs, we talked about right at the start the how, how much damage they do have. Now they actually, like you say, have those builds up to a four or five item builds. That damage is going to be prevalent. The question is, will EG be able to survive it? They've got themselves that tanky. Looking at it, looking at Wicked there, he's got what four and a half thousand hit points, something like that. Four thousand plus the shield, something like that. It's a lot of hit points, regardless. So he's going to be able to take a lot of tankiness in that front-loaded attack from them and dogs. And Supi with that Oracle's clearing all the wards, and with the Zac, you can engage over that wall onto the enemy team. So Lemonogs, they need to get some sort of ward down there, or kind of wait for this jump to come in. They want to fight for this inhibitor. I think they actually might be able to. Well, True Shot Barrage comes across. Froggen's stepping out very aggressively. Like you say, that Guardian Angel now up. They're looking to go towards this one. The Thresh Hook not going to land. Wicked gets slowed down. The poke continuing. They are taking this inhibitor to it down. The inhibitor, sorry, going down slowly. Not quite enough. Oh, that cocoon just on the peak there. Try catching on to Froggen. Stepped away from it. EG are not giving watch, up just yet, though. Watch the Fosca Shadow coming at Crepo. I have a feeling that's going to come. He's going to make that big move for his team, and then they're going to follow up with everything they possibly have. Well, it's going to be either Nuke Duck. They need to just drop in seconds. He's only got 2,000 hit points, so it would be possible if they can get on towards him quick enough. Zoro Zero will get that Hemo Plague down on him regardless. One more shot in the inhib will take it down. But EG playing this one very cautiously, as you would expect, because, as you said, they will either go into third place on their own in a rightful position, or they're going to be seventh. That's just that's just from one game, but right now, EG, like, Lemonox are playing this like EG has Baron, and EG can just walk in and take it with one, more, one or two more hits, and Frog can take it low and engaging. Frog and goes in, that Guardian Angel is up, but it forces Nuke Duck away, there's the inhib, and they do back off, so successful hit and run from EG. I, I had hopes that he would commit to that one and go for the fight, but they did, and they back away, because Baron's up another 30 seconds. So we're going to see our third Baron of the game, them looks they do have a many ways pushed at that top and bottom turret or lanes right now, but there's no one there to really kind of help it out and just kind of give it that little shove they need for a free inhibitor. Yeah, Snoopy not being caught out this time around. Puts that pink wall down on Baron because he will be up in 20 seconds time. The turret in the bottom inner lane was taken down by minions, so that's been dropped by the minions alone. Stan United is still available for Wicked. He's clearing out that bottom lane. Lemon Dogs, they're in position, ready for Baron. Oh, Crepo, I like his positioning. He's getting ready for a potential Flash Crescendo right now. With Wicked coming in from the side, they do have, like, they all have the ability to get over that wall, except Yellow Peak, who can just attack with the spray and pray. But right now, Yellow Peak getting caught. Peak getting caught out. Stan United has been used out already here. So the EG going to have to try and turn some aggression, try and see if they can pick up a kill. They're getting on towards Dexter. That's going to be the smite going down. The Hemo play catches on towards all of Evil Geniuses. But that's going to be a great crescendo. Wicked taking the front loading damage again. Mithy's going to get caught. He gets dropped down there. Snoopy launches himself in the passive. Will be safe though. Tab's going to be focused on. He gets dropped down there. Yellow Pete picks up that kill. Zoro Zero, the next target. He gets caught by the slow of Pete. And now he's going to go mode down will pull it up and it's not going to be enough uses the zonia's just trying to buy some time he gets shadow dash and caught out there by wicked that's a four for zero for evil geniuses they're in the driving seat will they push through for the win i'm sure as hell they will they're gonna go to the super minions in the mid and you saw right there what lemonox's plan was during those fights is just to kite as much as possible but dexter just got caught tabs unfortunately couldn't take that brunt of the damage and eg they're looking to close this out they're gonna close it out evil geniuses will be the first team in super week to shut down the Lemon Dogs, the number one team in the LCS will get taken down. That's going to put Evil Geniuses into third place. Ironically, Froggen does get taken out towards the end there, but it's Evil Geniuses that have taken the win. They are now 3-1 and one in Super Week, and that may well just be enough to make them through to the playoffs. Well, guys, what about Yellow Pink Crypt? All right, there they go. They finally got in a hug there. I was like, that's kind of messed up, but yeah, great job at EG considering what happened in the beginning. They got that first bud, then Lemon Dogs seemed to just turn it around. They were out farming them in a couple, a couple of different lanes because we saw EG throw in a couple of lane swaps right there, but they 
They held on, they kept their confidence, and they closed out the game. But the Lemon Dogs sure as hell made them work for it, that's for sure. It was tense, tense moments. They picked up that Baron Evil Geniuses, just weren't sure what was going to happen. They thought, are Lemon Dogs going to come at us? Are we going to get drilled? They did take some of the inner turrets, but they didn't quite get to the Evil Geniuses base, and they held on out there. And would you believe it? It was ironically Yellow Peak getting caught out that started the whole fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird, but that QSS that he picked up, I think it was like 25 minutes in, is the thing that kind of saved him.